Hi, my name is Tage, and I'll be presenting our work on a verified concurrent journaling system. Suppose we wanted to implement a correct file system. By correct, in this talk, we mean that file system operations should atomically follow their specifications, even if the system crashes at any time. We also want the file system to be performant. It should take advantage of concurrently issued operations to efficiently use both multiple cores and disk I.O. To make it easier to achieve these correctness and performance goals, we implemented GoJournal, a journaling system. A file system can use GoJournal to write multiple objects atomically. Using GoJournal, we implemented GoNFS, a performant NFS server. GoNFS imports GoJournal as a Go package and uses it to make every file system operation atomic. To increase confidence in the journal, it comes with a machine-checked proof of correctness that shows that it really provides atomic writes on top of a disk that only supports atomic 4 kilobyte reads and writes. GoJournal has a practical and performant implementation. I'll discuss the details of the performance evaluation at the end of the talk, but for now, I'll just mention that GoJournal gets throughput and scalability comparable to that of the Linux NFS server. Prior to this work, there's been a lot of progress on verified systems, but crash safety and concurrency have been challenging. Most frameworks only support crash safety or concurrency, but not both. Our own prior work on Perennial does address both crash safety and concurrency, but it wouldn't scale to a system of this size where modularity in the proof was essential. In this work, we re-implemented Perennial to support new techniques that were necessary to handle GoJournal. Our contributions in this work are GoJournal, the first verified concurrent journal, and Perennial 2.0, a new crash safety and concurrency framework that made it possible to verify GoJournal. To evaluate GoJournal specification, we verified a simple NFS server on top, and we evaluated GoJournal performance and find that it gets good performance compared to Linux. In this talk, I'm not going to talk much about the verification framework. Instead, I'll focus on GoJournal and its performance evaluation. To use the journaling system, the caller first initializes it on top of a disk. Then, the journal supports operation like this one. This example copies a disk block from address 0 to addresses 1 and 2. What the system guarantees is that even if the computer crashes, either both blocks will be updated or neither will be. Concurrent operations are also guaranteed to be atomic, but the caller is left to acquire appropriate locks so that operations access disjoint objects. Operations can also read and write objects smaller than a block. For example, the file system uses this to pack 128 byte inodes into a single block. Sublock access is not just a convenience, but results in more fine grained locking, since the caller only needs to lock the relevant objects rather than the entire block. Concurrency makes it challenging to even specify what this API is supposed to do. So consider this example that has two concurrent operations. The one on the left is the copy example from before, while the operation on the right is a simple example that just writes to address 7. The behavior of the two commit calls is to somehow merge the writes from both operations, but this is difficult to state and use. One of our contributions in this work is to provide a usable specification for concurrent operations. Before we get to our solution, it's helpful to compare to a sequential journaling system, where the specification is relatively simple to state. With a sequential journal, there's only ever one operation in progress, so the state of the system can be summarized by just giving the on-disk values of every address and the in-memory values that include any buffered writes from the current operation. We can then specify commit using a whore triple, which says that if we run commit in the precondition state, the result is to copy the in-memory state to disk. Not shown in this example is that commit also promises that if the system crashes, the resulting state is either the precondition state or the postcondition state, but not some combination of the two. Unfortunately, this specification doesn't work for a concurrent journal because there's more than one operation in progress at any time, so it isn't consistent to talk about the single next in memory state. For our solution uses a technique called separation logic to talk about only a subset of the disk at any time. The basic unit is this disk points to assertion, which talks about only a single object. Each operation specification will only refer to its footprint, the set of addresses it actually accesses. In our example, this would be addresses 0, 1, and 2. And now, the overall specification 
only mentions how these three addresses are transformed. Addresses 1 and 2 start out with arbitrary contents and end up with the value from address 0. As a standard in separation logic, it's implicit in the specification that any addresses not in the footprint are uninvolved in the operation and are thus unaffected. This is what allows us to reason about this operation independently of the concurrent operation that wrote to address 7. Now what about the state during an operation? For that, we introduce a new operation points to assertion that's specific to an in-progress op. Whereas the disk points to fact gives the on-disk value, the operation points to fact gives the operation's local view of block 1, which might come from a disk or from a buffered write. To initially obtain an operation points to assertion, the proof can at any time lift a disk points to. And note that lifting is a proof-only reasoning step and doesn't correspond to any executable code. The Go journal specification is stated in terms of these operation points to assertions. For example, writing within an operation updates the local view of that address, while reading gets the current value. The magic of the specification really happens at commit time, when all of the operation points to assertions are transformed into disk points to assertions. If at any point prior to commit the system crashes, the proof returns the original disk points to assertions, reflecting that these changes were all in memory up to that point. And as a result, the overall operation is atomic. We always end up with either the old disk points to assertions or the new ones. To illustrate the specification in action, let's see how it applies to our example operation that does a copy from address 0 to addresses 1 and 2. The first step in the proof is to do, lift the entire footprint into operation points to assertions. Again, this only happens in the proof and doesn't require code. The body of the operation manipulates the local view. And finally, commit turns all of these into durable disk points to assertions that end up with the right post condition. GoJournal is a large enough system that we couldn't implement it all at once, let alone prove it all at once. Instead, we divided its implementation into three major layers. The exact details of what these layers do isn't important, but I want to emphasize that each layer involves concurrency and crash safety challenges. In this talk, I'll touch on just two challenges in the bottom most layers. So the first challenge is in the write-ahead log. The write-ahead logging layer implements the core atomicity primitive for the journal, the ability to write several disk blocks atomically. It does this by first logging writes to a fixed size log, which is what makes them atomic. And then when the log fills up, the system installs updates to the rest of the disk and clears them from the log. In a sequential write-ahead log, the system would pause while logging or installation were in progress. But in the concurrent write-ahead log, logging and installation happen in background threads. So it turns out that concurrency creates a crash safety challenge. I'll illustrate that by showing the process of writing to disk. The first thing that happens is that writes are buffered in memory. I've shown a state here where the red write is already logged and on disk, and a new orange write just got buffered in memory. Eventually, the write will be logged to disk. Doing these steps separately enables an optimization called group commit, where if multiple writes are concurrently buffered, they can all be logged together. However, buffering creates a complication for crash safety. What happens if the system crashes in the middle before the write gets logged? In that case, it's possible that a read observes the buffered write from memory, but then that data is lost on crash. And the result is that the caller observes a different result after a crash, and the write-ahead log appears to have lost some data. It turns out that in practice, the journal never observes these buffered writes. And we want to leave this in the implementation to get good performance. So GoJournal's proof handles this by precisely specifying what data is lost in the write-ahead log, and then reasoning that this is safe in the upper layers. The second challenge is in the layer above the write-ahead log, which implements support for subblock objects. For example, consider concurrent access to inodes within a block. It turns out that we can allow reads and writes to proceed concurrently. So let's see why this is safe. The challenge lies in reasoning about this. So here I'm showing a read for inode 2 within this block. The read actually has to first read the entire 4 kilobyte block from the write-ahead log, and then it takes the subset corresponding to inode 2 and returns it to the caller. If a concurrent write comes in for, say, inode 4, then the full block read may or may not include this red write, 
but we proved that this race doesn't matter, as far as reading just inode 2 is concerned. Concurrent writes to objects within the same block, on the other hand, are unsafe, because they require a read-modify-write sequence. And the code addresses this problem by holding a lock while preparing the writes. One reason why this example is interesting is that the code involved is quite simple. We just grab a lock around one helper function in the commit code. But if you've ever written concurrent code, you might appreciate that just adding a lock is far from simple to reason about. And indeed, the proof has to show that this is safe even though we have concurrent reads and even though we release the lock before we actually write to disk. To actually verify GoJournal, we implemented a new verification framework, Perennial 2.0. The framework introduces several new verification techniques that I won't go into here, but they are described in the paper. The first technique, logically atomic crash specifications, is particularly important because it enables a modular proof that reasons about these three layers independently. We implemented GoJournal in about 1300 lines of Go. The proof uses our perennial 2.0 verification framework, which is built in about 20,000 lines of code on top of the Iris concurrency framework. And all of this happens in the Cock Proof Assistant. To actually verify the GoJournal implementation, we use a tool called Goose to translate it to a model in Coq that we can apply Perennial to. The proof that GoJournal meets its specification is about 26,000 lines of code. So this results in a proof to code ratio of 20 times, which is definitely large, but in line with prior work on verified concurrent systems. And GoJournal additionally has the complexity of reasoning about crash safety. To evaluate performance, we implemented GoNFS, which is an unverified NFS server that uses GoJournal for atomicity. We'll evaluate the performance of GoNFS by comparing against the Linux kernel NFS server. The Linux baseline exports an ext4 file system running in data equals journal mode, so both systems write all data through a journal. For this talk, I'll only present results from an AWS i3 bare metal instance. This is a storage optimized machine with a CPU that has 36 cores and a fast NVMe drive. The three benchmarks presented are small file, which is a metadata heavy workload, large file, which is data heavy, and an application mix that runs git clone and make. All of the benchmarks were run via the Linux NFS client. For the first set of benchmarks, I'll present the performance of GoNFS relative to Linux. These benchmarks were run on an in-memory disk to avoid any IO overheads. And we see that GoNFS gets comparable performance, at least 95% throughput of Linux, across the three benchmarks. So these results are all with a single client. What about concurrency? To evaluate scalability, we took the small file benchmark and ran it with many clients on independent directories. This experiment uses physical storage so that while some operations are being written to disk, others have a chance to prepare. And we find that GoNFS scales its throughput at least as well as Linux actually outperforming it beyond a handful of clients. I want to emphasize that the performance in this experiment really comes from concurrency in the journal. To demonstrate this, we showed the performance with a serial version of GoJournal that has locks around just the tricky concurrency in the write-ahead log. So while this variant of GoJournal would be significantly easier to prove correct, we see that it gets almost no better throughput with multiple clients. And actually, even with a single client, the concurrency we get from background logging and installation gives 30% 30, 30 better throughput in the real GoNFS compared to this serial configuration. In summary, GoJournal is a verified, concurrent, and crash-safe journaling system. There are many verification challenges due to concurrency in its implementation, which we developed new techniques to address. We find that GoJournal is performant. It helps GoNFS get performance and scalability comparable to that of Linux.